Trump's tax reforms. Will everyone get a slice of the pie? Thank you for joining us for another Bank of Cardiff newscast. In line with Trump's pre-election promises and with all the pomp and circumstance we've come to expect from the new administration, the White House unveiled its plans to reform the US tax system this week. Heralding the biggest tax cuts in history, the document itself was something of a damp squib, just a single page summarizing the main points of the reform agenda, which would, at a stroke, simplify the US tax system, slash business taxes, and consign inheritance taxes to history. Well, the plan was light on detail, but headline proposals include reducing individual income tax brackets from 7 to 3, that's 10%, 25 and 35%, and more than halving corporate tax rates from 35% to 15%, as well as moving to a territorial tax system and imposing a one-time tax on money held overseas. Some vaguer proposals included providing tax relief for families with child and dependent care expenses and eliminating, quote, targeted tax breaks that mainly benefit the wealthiest taxpayers, unquote though it's unclear how these would be implemented. Trump's chief economic advisor, Gary Cohn, explained that the reforms were about, quote, growing the economy, creating jobs, unquote. Well, critics, however, are seeing it more as an expensive tax bonanza for the rich. Naturally, accusations were also leveled at the president for initiating tax reforms that would heavily benefit his own businesses and that of his billionaire heavy cabinet, not least the proposal to cut the alternative minimum tax, the AMT, which was introduced to prevent the super-rich from manipulating tax deductions to artificially reduce their tax liability. Treasury Secretary Stephen Mnuchin and Cohn ducked questions about how Trump would personally benefit from the proposals focusing instead on what they called a once-in-a-generation opportunity to overhaul the tax system. Mnuchin was also vague about how the cost of the tax cuts would be funded, commenting only that the administration was working on a lot of details, but that it was likely the cuts would pay for themselves through growth, reduction of deductions, and closing loopholes. There was no sign, though, of the border adjustment tax, championed by House Speaker Paul Ryan, and designed to offset any loss in revenue from corporate tax cuts. The Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget, or CRFB, believes Trump's planned reforms would cost between $3 and $7 trillion. Its analysis shows that a median $5.5 trillion spend would increase debt to 111% of GDP by 2027, higher than at any time in U.S. history. Well, tax reform was one of the president's major campaign threads with promises to reduce the high corporation tax rates that he felt were suppressing business growth. However, he has also consistently pledged to make inroads into the country's $19 trillion deficit, a pledge that appears to run counter to the costs of the planned tax reforms, which could add trillions more to the national debt. In any case, the president's tax reform plans will need democratic support to pass, and in order to satisfy the government's reconciliation rules, will need to show that proposed tax cuts can be balanced with spending cuts. It's a tricky equation. There's little doubt that effective tax reform that facilitates economic growth while cutting red tape and fairly balancing tax contributions across individuals and corporations would be welcome. It remains to be seen whether Trump's new tax initiatives will deliver the growth without disadvantaging low and middle earners or further denting the national debt. Join us later this week for another Bank of Cardiff newscast. And remember that all our newscasts are available on our website, www.bankofcardiff.com forward slash newscasts.